So I've been wanting to make this video for a little while now. It's about omega-6 fatty acids and why you shouldn't avoid them. Uh, for many years now, I'd say since the early 2000s, maybe the 2010s, people have been avoiding vegetable oils, which are healthful fats, which are fats that help prevent heart disease, uh, because they're under this presumption that somehow omega-6 fatty acids are going to kill them, omega-6 fatty acids are going to ramp up your inflammation and kill you. Not necessarily. And a lot of a lot of this goes back to the paleo diet, and um, and the basically a, what the paleo diet. One of its uh, theories is is that people started um, getting sick because they replaced animal fats with vegetable oils. But this really isn't the case if you look at it. A lot of it actually. What, what's interesting is more so than the vegetable oils. If you really look, it has to do with low fat foods. But I don't even think that's really a cause for alarm. I think what really is the cause for the alarm is the refined carbohydrate foods. That is the one thing that I, I do actually agree with the uh, uh, with the keto guys and the paleo guys and, and all that, but you don't have to go keto or paleo. You just have to avoid refined carbohydrates and seek out whole grains. And I'm going to be doing a video on defense of the USDA diet. But one of the problems is people are avoiding peanuts, they're avoiding uh, all sorts of nuts and seeds and, and canola oil and all these uh, heart healthy fats. And there's links in the description, please follow them, that are not necessarily deleterious to the health. And they're not deleterious to the health. The biggest problem comes from this idea that you need this perfect omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, which isn't necessarily true. There's The thing is with the dietary omega-6 fatty acids, you're not necessarily utilizing 100% of them, but you need omega-6 fatty acids as much as you need omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, you need a higher amount of omega-6 to omega-3 to have that perfect ratio. And the thing is with oils like canola oil, which have a balance of omega-3s and omega-6s, it makes sense to consume things like canola oil. I did a video on canola oil, which I will put in the description. But my point is, is that there's a lot of this, uh, this uh, food, this orthorexia, for lack of a better term, and this idea that oh, I'm going to avoid all of this and all of that. Eh. The, the thing is, avoiding omega-6 fatty acids has not been shown to improve health. Okay, that's what you need to keep in mind. Reduction in total calories has been shown to improve health in most people, but that's because most people are overeating calories. So, of course, if you reduce fat consumption, it will decrease calories and will decrease your weight over time, which will improve your health outcome. But the facts are the facts. It doesn't seem to correlate with omega-6 consumption and da-da-da. You know, the, the thing is, it's overall caloric consumption, which will bring me, I have to get the, I have to uh, really set down, read it, and, uh, and think about how I'm going to do the video on Roy Walford's books on uh, the 120-year diet and uh, the uh, calorie restriction diet. Because I think it's high time I did those videos too. But I mean, the thing that I that disturbs me is that so many people are unnecessarily restricting oils, like I did at one time, and so unnecessarily restricting not even just oils, but things like peanuts and uh, and other uh, seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, etc. And these are all sources of healthy nutrients, minerals, vitamins, vitamin E. Uh, these are all sources of vitamin E and uh, different minerals, potassium, magnesium, uh, sodium. People also forget about sodium, and if they're salted nuts, they have sodium. So, I mean, you're, you're reducing a lot of healthful, your diet by a lot, especially if you're a vegan uh, or a 100% plant-based eater, and you don't really have to. You don't want a whole bunch of fat in your diet but a tiny bit of fat here and there, such as in like a light salad dressing or something like that, isn't going to destroy your health. Peanuts are not going to destroy your health. Walnuts are not going to destroy your health. Um, canola oil is not going to destroy your health. 
unless you're eating an overabundance of of calories. So if you eat like a lot of nuts one day, maybe you don't eat so much rice or maybe you don't eat so much bread. And most people, if they cut out the refined carbohydrates, they're calorie restricting right there because they're getting rid of those empty calories. And that's why I've always promoted, even when I was teaching people how to lose weight, before I tell people to restrict their calories, I always tell them to adjust their diet to a more nutrient-dense diet. Now, before the end of this video, I want to let you know I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, not a dietitian, not a chiropractor, not an RN, not a whatever. But my point is, is that for the most part, once most people transition to a nutrient-dense diet, the calorie restriction comes on its own usually. Uh, and it was funny because um, someone I'm helping with her diet right now, she told me, she goes, you know, it must be because she's, she's losing weight and keeping herself, not losing weight, but keeping a healthy weight and gaining muscle and everything like that on, um, I, on a uh, basically a, a plant-centered pescatarian diet. Uh, which is centered around plants and it has a whey protein supplement and, uh, you know, uh, tuna fish and things like that, but it's predominantly plant-based. And uh, she's doing well on the diet and like she pointed out to me, she goes, it's almost impossible to gain weight if you're eating healthy. And I explained to her, yes, that's the heart and soul of the USDA diet. If people eat what the USDA actually tells them to eat, they will be a healthy weight, Okay. Uh, and I'm going to get into that when I make my video on the USDA diet. And that's all for this video.